Hey guys, I'm Eric with American Trucks. In this video, I'm gonna give you my review and installation of this HDX winch mount and grill guard for all 2019 and later Chevy Silverado and GMC Sierra 1500s. Now this HDX winch mount and grill guard from Weston is ideal for the Sierra or Silverado owner out there who's looking to add a winch to the front of their truck as well as some wraparound protection for their radiator and headlights. But they don't wanna add all that extra weight of a full width steel bumper and also probably prefer the chrome look of their factory grill and bumper. Now, like I said, this kit from Weston offers a very rugged yet attractive alternative to a full width steel bumper for adding a winch to the front of your truck and it's gonna give you solid protection for your front end as you're going down those less traveled roads or off-roading altogether. As you'll see in our upcoming installation part of this video, this winch tray is very solid. In fact, the steel on that tray is thicker than some of the steel bumpers that I've seen here at American Trucks. The other nice thing about this design is it's low center of gravity. It's gonna keep it below your bumper line and keep the winch from blocking any incoming air to your radiator. And basically lines up directly to your factory frame rails, which is gonna make it a very solid connection and very durable. Weston rates this winch plate as being able to handle up to 16,500 pounds on a direct line pull. Now the upright grill guard portion of this kit is just as durable as that solid winch plate. You have these one piece uprights and the two inch wing tubes are welded directly to those for a very solid setup. Now the solid construction of this grill guard is 304 stainless steel and it's also protected by a thick and durable black powder coat. You also have these thick rubber guards here on your uprights for that added protection. Now coming in right around $1,200, this kit is towards the upper end, but I gotta tell you, working with this kit, it's very well put together and very well designed. Now americantrucks.com offers this same HDX kit from Weston without the winch mount. If you don't need a winch on the front of your truck, but you still like the aggressive looks and you still want that protection for your radiator and headlights. Now as far as the installation goes here guys, I'm giving this a very solid two out of three wrenches on our difficulty meter. As you'll see in the installation portion of this video, we are gonna be removing our factory grill and our factory bumper so that we can mount these heavy duty arms and brackets that this whole setup rests on. That's a very heavy duty setup and it bolts directly to your frame rails. And you're gonna to wanna to remove those pieces for better access for inserting those bolts and other bits of hardware. Adding a little bit of difficulty to this installation, guys, is on your factory bumper, you're gonna to have to do some cutting and expand the holes where the factory tow hooks come out in order to accommodate the mounting brackets for this kit. All in all, you're gonna need some basic hand tools, a cutting tool, and I'll show you all those in a second. I would budget about three hours of your time to get this installation done properly. So with all that said, let's go ahead and do this installation. Okay, tools we're gonna to use for this installation, guys, are an electric impact wrench, a trim removal tool, a pair of 18 millimeter sockets, as well as 16, 15, 13, and 10 millimeter sockets, a 3 8 inch swivel socket, 8 millimeter and 6 millimeter Allen keys or Allen sockets, a T15 Torx bit, a 1 quarter inch socket wrench, 15 and 18 millimeter crescent wrenches, a 15 millimeter ratcheting wrench, and an 18 millimeter ratcheting wrench, a pair of extensions, a body saw or similar cutting instrument as well as some protection for your hands and your eyes, and some PB blaster or similar solvent. Okay, the first steps we're gonna do to get this uh, grill guard mounted is we're gonna remove some locking pins up top here, remove the radiator shroud. That's gonna give us access to more hardware that's holding in our grill. We're gonna have to remove that to access the bolts holding on our front bumper. Ultimately, we're gonna remove the front bumper so we can attach some brackets and get access to our frame rails. All right, now if you've never worked with these before, guys, there are two-piece pins. The center part of it kind of locks it in place, so you lift that up, and then you can pull the whole pin out. And if you end up pulling out that center section, no big deal. Uh, it'll go right back together. You haven't broken it. Just like that. I'll be able to put that back together.
This is all loose now, but uh, make it a little easier to get this off. I'm just gonna remove our latch handle here using a T15 Torx bit. Fits nicely in these little bolts. All right, those little bolts I just removed, I just thread them back in there. Nice place to keep them so they don't get lost. And you can just pull this right off. All right, guys, now to get the grill off, you should have like four of these bolts right here. I'm using a 10 millimeter. We're gonna take these out. All right, once we get those bolts out, you should be able to just give a firm pull on your grill. There's just uh, some lock tabs or clips that are holding it in place right now. All right, next we're gonna go after four bolts that are just below the bumper line here, guys. Two on each side. One's a 13 and one's an 18. And to get at them, your truck probably has a rubber trim piece like this. You can just lift up the front edge. And I switched over to a swivel socket. It's a little tight in here and this piece kind of gets in your way. So you kind of want a little bend there. I'm just gonna repeat what I did on the passenger side. Yeah, it's pretty tight in there, especially you gotta, if, if your truck has this uh, louvered uh, system as part of the radiator setup and you got a wiring harness here, it's really tight in there, guys. You really ought to think about getting a uh, swivel socket or something smaller than this big impact wrench that I've got. All right, now we're gonna take out these two bolts here. This connects a bracket that supports the end of the bumper to the frame. These are uh, 15 millimeters. All right, now we're gonna remove these three uh, bolts here that are holding this bracket. It's connecting the lower part of the air dam to the frame rail. These are a uh, 10 millimeter. All right, now both those brackets that uh, we unbolted, you can repeat those on the driver's side. Same exact hardware setup. Now we're back on the top side of the bumper. We only have a couple more bolts to go before we're gonna be able to pull the bumper off. We're going back in, peel this back, and there's an 18 millimeter bolt about straight down from here, and there's another one on the other side. And I've got my leg up against the bumper just to hold it snug against the truck. All right guys, like I said, on the driver's side, we have the same uh, size bolt here. It's an 18 millimeter, a little bit tighter in here. And you might've seen my bumper move a little bit after I loosened that. It's pretty loose, so I have my knee up against it just as a safety precaution. Before we take the bumper off, two things I want to call out to you guys. I always recommend wearing gloves. Sometimes you have a sharp edge on the back side of the metal parts. And also make sure if your truck has fog lights or some other electrical equipment on your bumper that you're unplugging those wiring harnesses. This truck does not, so we don't have anything to show you. But I did want to call that out to you. Now right, go ahead. You might want to slide your bumper over a little bit. 
because it tucks into that little pocket on the side there. And pull it off. Okay, next step is we're gonna have to make room inside the frame rail here for the heavy duty support arms that are gonna hold the winch plate and the grill guard. These are heavy duty pieces from Weston that we're gonna slide right inside the frame rail. So to get these out, we've got two 18 millimeter bolts here, and then this nut on the inside is, happens to be a 19. So we're gonna, add, gonna go ahead and remove those right now. As you can see, once you get that loosened, you can just take it off by hand. Then this bolt on the inside, there's no nut. Just remove that. And we're just gonna repeat this on the driver's side. Okay, for this next step, I got our stock bumper up here on a table so we can give you a better look at what we're gonna do. You're gonna need to find the two brackets in your kit that look like this. They're labeled with a P and a D that'll tell you for passenger side or driver's side. And what we're gonna be doing is removing these bolts here, this bolt, and that bolt. Now you're, what you're looking at, it's closest to you. This is the top side of the bumper, just for your orientation. We're gonna remove these bolts here and here, then slide these brackets on like like so, reattach these bolts. These are basically support brackets that are gonna help support the upright part of your brush guard. All right, now to get this out, we're gonna use a 13 millimeter socket. I'm gonna tighten this up a little bit, but leave it a little bit loose so we have some play once we mount the brush guard. And we'll do the same thing on the driver's side. And just something to note, once you have those brackets installed, Weston recommends that it should be about a little bit over 41 inches between the brackets for proper spacing to meet up with your brush guard uprights. All right, next step, you're gonna have two of these in your kit. You'll see right here, there's a letter P stamped for passenger side. That's how you know which bracket you're gonna use. And just so you know, guys, you might need a pry bar or something like that to make this opening just a little bit wider. These are designed to fit in there very snugly, and you might have a little bit of difficulty getting it in there, maybe a little bit of uh, grease or some PB Blast or something like that. Shoot it on the inside to help get this thing in there a little bit easier, but you're gonna set it in here like this. And just because you're gonna to have to maneuver this around a little bit to get these different holes lined up for your bolts, I like to grab this large 18 millimeter uh, hex head bolt. Once I got that lined up, I'll get that started and that'll be kind of our starting point to get the other holes lined up. All right, next bolt guys, we're gonna get in here. We get started with this. And as we were messing with this here, I uh, noticed that these two bolts are the trickiest ones to kind of get lined up here. So that's the order, that's the reason why I'm doing it in this order. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that down. It's a 16 millimeter socket.
And then this front bolt here, I already put a uh, washer, lock washer, and a nut on the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten those down now. All right, now for this last hole back on this side, grab out one of these uh, long bolts. You're gonna have an 18 millimeter head there, and there's a pair of uh, large washers. Go ahead and feed that on. And then you have a matching washer, lock washer, and nut for the inside. All right guys, next you're gonna to wanna to grab with those bolt plates. There's two of them per side in your kit. One is noticeably larger than the other. You're gonna to wanna to grab the small one for this. We're gonna end up using this little spring uh, fishing wire right here. And we're gonna end up bringing this plate with the bolt through this hole on the side of the frame rail down through to this hole. So what you're gonna to need to do is fish this thing empty first up through there. And when it peeks through the side here, grab it. Don't pull it all the way through. Leave it so you got some extra right here. Then go ahead and thread it on to the spring, kind of the springy part there. Once you get several threads on there so it's not gonna come off, go ahead and pull it through. The kit also comes with these plastic uh, retaining clips. You can thread these on. And then it'll kind of hold that nut plate in place. It's not as crucial with these because they're aiming down, but the ones we're gonna do in a minute that aim on the side, these will be a little bit more important. Then you're gonna have a washer, lock washer, and a nut that you're gonna put up on these. And we'll tighten that down with a tool in a second. Let's grab a 16 millimeter socket. All right, then go ahead and grab the larger nut plate. I've already got this one started. Again, fish it through the same hole in the side. Once you get it through, you can take this off. Now you can use those plastic retaining clips if you want, guys. I have my hand in there. Pushing up against the back of that nut plate, it's just gonna hold it in place. I think that's actually easier, in my opinion. But go ahead and grab this large washer, slide that on, and you got a lock washer. All right, now that we completed the passenger side frame rail mounting bracket, you go ahead and repeat that on the driver's side. It's pretty much the same process we already showed you. It's all the same hardware, and you're gonna be fishing through a couple of uh, bolt plates. Same exact steps that we just showed you. So what we're gonna do now, I have the stock bumper up here, and as we were trying to line things up and check for fitment before uh, shooting video of it, we noticed that we're gonna have to trim some of these areas on this plastic on the bottom part of our bumper around where the tow hooks protrude out from the frame rails. Now obviously we removed the tow hooks during the uninstall if you remember uh, to make room for these mounting brackets but these mounting brackets are a little wide and just the way they sit we're gonna have to trim this area here. Weston mentions this in the instruction manual uh, but they don't tell you precisely how to do it so we're gonna give you a little bit of an idea how we're gonna do it and see if we can get it to fit here with this bumper. All right, we got our pneumatic body saw here. If you have another similar cutting tool at home, like with a cutting wheel, you could also use that here. This plastic isn't real thick and it cuts pretty easily with a power tool. So we're gonna trim up these edges here, kind of along where you see that uh, line that's kind of already molded into the plastic.
Okay, now that we've trimmed up the, the other side as well, should be able to just slide our bumper right back up on over top of the Weston HDX brackets that come with this kit. And once you got it nice and lined up, go ahead and start a bolt in there just to hang it in place. And then we'll go ahead and tighten those up. Grab this bolt too, slide it in here. This is an 18 millimeter. And then this bolt here is a 13 millimeter. And go ahead and grab one of these top hat bolts. 18 millimeter. Once you have those three bolts tightened up, you do the same exact thing on the driver's side. All right, now go ahead and grab your winch plate. Set it in place. We're gonna have three bolts per side to attach this to our mounting brackets. All right, now we're gonna be going for these three holes right here in the triangle pattern. I wanna grab these uh, button head, hex head bolts. These uh, require an eight millimeter hex key. And you're gonna to wanna to grab these this serrated uh, nut and this washer as well. That's gonna go on our underside. When we tighten that down, I'm gonna use an 18 millimeter crescent wrench for the nut, and again, an eight millimeter uh, hex key for the bolt. Just gonna get the other bolt started. That's for those two holes here, this outer hole kind of in the corner. I want to grab this top hat bolt and nut with the serrated edges there. And that piece is going to go in over here. I'm going to go ahead and tighten these down. The solder bolt here use a 13 millimeter socket and a 15 millimeter wrench for the nut on the underside. And then we'll go ahead and repeat those same bolts on the driver's side of the truck. All right guys, now the instructions say you gotta mount these spacer blocks on the end of our winch plate. The diagonal holes should line up kind of angled forward towards the front of the truck. And as we're working on this, we notice the fitment is really tight in here. So what I recommend doing is starting the bottom bolt and getting that up and grabbing one of your top hat uh, nuts here with the serrated surface and line that up right with the hole. And as you put the bolt in, just kind of thread it on by hand. It's really tight in here. The mounting bolts for the winch plate are right there. So you're gonna have to get your crescent wrench up on it like this. Right now I'm gonna mount this other one up top. 
And that'll help hold this bracket in place while I tighten everything down. And these are 18s again. If you have a ratcheting wrench, that's perfect for in here. And I'm just gonna use the open end of the crescent right here. And we'll kind of tighten it. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, now that we have these extension blocks on the sides mounted on both sides, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten down these brackets that are gonna help secure the upright portion of the grill guard. Now, to know exactly where you need to have these positioned so you can tighten them down, the instruction manual shows 41.3 inches between the outer edge of each one of these brackets. Now, we test fitted this off camera, and that is accurate. So if you make these 41.3 inches apart, you can go ahead and tighten them down right there, and that's what I'm gonna do right now. And the reason we need to tighten those down now is the bolts are here, and after that, we're gonna be reinstalling our factory grill. So once you have that in place, it's gonna be a lot tougher to access these bolts. We're gonna tighten them down now. And that's a 13 millimeter. If you have a ratcheting wrench, it makes it a lot easier. Okay, we're gonna reinstall our factory grill. We're gonna drop the bottom in place and pop in the lock tabs. All right, now go ahead and grab these bolts that we uninstalled earlier. These are 10 millimeters. Go ahead and replace your top radiator shroud. And then we'll do a series of lock tabs to secure that in place. Go ahead and slide your hood latch back on. And we're using the, these two tiny screws. And tighten it up with a T15 Torx bit. All right, now, so at this step, guys, you're probably gonna want a second set of hands. This has some weight to it, but it's also very large and unwieldy. This grill guard comes in one piece, so it's very large, and you're gonna be lining up a couple of holes here, and you're gonna have to get some starter bolts in there to hold it up. There's nothing you can just kind of set it on and leave it there. Um, this will totally fall if you don't do that uh, with the starter bolts. So I'm gonna grab a friend here. We're gonna line it up and start some bolts.
Okay, now we already started some bolts, like I said, just to hold it up there, but to give you a closer look what ones we're using, we're using these uh, hex socket button head screws or bolts and what they call Belleville washers. They're these washers that are they're kind of bent so they can crush a little bit and they have the serrated edges there that's gonna help hold this in, uh, in place. And then these serrated flange nuts right here. You're gonna wanna point the bolt in And just get it started finger tight. And to tighten them down, we're gonna use an eight millimeter hex key and or hex socket and an 18 millimeter crescent wrench for the nut. Okay, now to mount up here to the bracket that's coming out from our bumper. It's basically a slightly smaller version of what we just put in down below. Same thing, uh, hex socket button head uh, screw with that crushable washer and the serrated flange nut. And to tighten these down, go ahead and grab a six millimeter uh, Allen socket for that and a 15 millimeter for the nut. And go ahead and repeat those steps on the driver's side. All right, the last few things we gotta do, if you remember on the underside, we have a couple of 15 millimeter bolts we're gonna put back in here and a bracket that's gonna go up over here. Okay, I'll go ahead and re replace these brackets uh, just so you know which one goes where. There's a little RH for right hand. So you know which bracket to use. Get the little lip in there. Get it started. We've got these two bottom ones down here. You can go ahead and grab a 10 millimeter socket to tighten them down. Go ahead and repeat the same steps on the driver's side of your truck. All right guys, that about wraps up this review and installation of this HDX winch mount and grill guard from Weston for all 2019 and later Chevy Silverado and GMC Sierra 1500s. Now for all things truck, keep it right here at americantrucks.com.